All right, final example, find all roots of x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 11x squared minus 8x minus 60 by using the fact that x squared plus 4 is one of its factors. So first thing that's going to make this easier for us, if we want to keep breaking this down into factors, right, if we're looking for, if we want to find the answers, if we want to find what it is, we've got to factor it so we can get to the roots. So we want to factor this larger thing. So we know that we can pull out x squared plus 4. So if we're going to pull it out, can we use synthetic division? No, because it's not in the form x minus k. We've got this x squared. So we've got to use polynomial long division. So x squared plus 4, we plug in x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 11x squared minus 8x minus 60. Great. So x squared plus 4 goes into x to the fourth. Oh, but notice, we do we have an x in here, right? So we don't. So it's once again plus 0x. So let's rewrite this. It's not just x squared plus 4. We can see this as a three-term thing where 1 has actually sort of disappeared plus 0x plus 4. Notice that they're the same thing, but it'll help us see what we're doing. So how many times does x squared go into x to the fourth? It goes in x squared, but we don't put it here. We put it here, where it would line up for three different terms. One term, two terms, three terms, so it lines up on the third term over here, minus 11x, so it will be x squared here. So x squared times x squared plus 0x plus 4, so we get x to the fourth, this is just blank still, plus 4x squared. Now, we subtract by that, we put our subtraction onto both of our pieces, so now we're adding, so x to the fourth minus x to the fourth becomes 0, negative 11x squared minus 4x squared becomes negative 15x squared. We bring down our negative 2x cubed, bring down our negative 8x, so we have everything, negative 2x cubed minus 15x squared minus 8x. So once again, we just ask, how many times does the first term go into the first term here? So negative 2x cubed divided by x squared gets us just negative 2x squared. Oh, whoops, sorry, we're dividing by x squared because negative 2 just x to the 1. So negative 2 times x squared gets us negative 2x cubed. And then negative 2x times 4 becomes negative 8x. We subtract by this, so we distribute so our subtraction, so that becomes positive, that becomes positive, now we're adding. Negative 2x cubed plus 2x cubed becomes 0, zilch. Negative 8x plus 8x becomes zip, nada. And now we bring down the thing that didn't get touched, the minus 15x squared, the minus 60, and we've got negative 15x squared minus 60, and hopefully it'll line up perfectly. In fact, we know it has to line up perfectly because we were told explicitly it's one of the factors, so there should be no remainder, otherwise something went wrong. x squared plus 0x plus 4, how many times does that fit into negative 15x squared minus 60? Once again, we just look at the first part, negative 15x squared divided by x squared becomes just minus 15. So negative 15x squared, multiplying it out, 4 times negative 15 minus 60. We now subtract by all that. Subtraction distributes, cancels those into plus signs. We add 0 and 0. We have a remainder of 0, which is good. That should just be the case because we were told it was a factor. So we get x squared minus 2x minus 15. So what is our polynomial? It's another way of stating this polynomial. We could also say this as x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 2x minus 15. So let's keep breaking this up. x squared minus 2x minus 15, how can we factor that? x squared plus 4, can we factor that anymore? No, we can't. It's irreducible. If we were to try to set that to 0, we'd have to have x squared when squared becomes a negative number. There's no real numbers that do that. So that one, that's irreducible. We're not going to get any roots out of that. No real roots for there x squared minus 2x minus 15. How can we factor this? Just 1 in front of the x squared, so that part's easy. It's going to be x and x. And then what about the next part? Negative 15, we could factor that into, one of them's going to have to be negative. We could factor into 5 and 3. Hey, 5 and 3 have a difference of 2, so let's make negative 5 and plus 3. We check that x squared plus 3x minus 5x, negative 2x, negative 5 times 3, negative 15. Great. So at this point, we set everything to 0. x squared plus 4, that will provide no answers. So x squared plus 4 equals 0. So nothing there. You know, there's no answers there. x minus 5 equals 0. Turn this one in. That gets us x equals 5. x plus 3 equals 0. This gives us all the roots, x equals negative 3. So our answers, all of the roots for this are x equals negative 3 and 
5. And we were able to figure this by being able to break down the much more complicated polynomial into something that was manageable, something we can totally factor, and we had to do that through polynomial long division. All right, cool. Hope you got a good idea of how this all works. Just remember, polynomial long division, that's probably your best bet. Just think of it the same way that you approach just doing normal, good old long division with plain numbers that you did many, many years ago. It's basically the same thing, just with a slightly different format. You know, how many times does it fit in? Multiply, subtract, repeat, 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 get to a remainder. All right, we'll see you at educator.com later. Bye.